Scott, how are you? Michael Zano, how are you, my friend? Well, that was a pretty, uh, that was a slow swivel you just had there. I was just, uh, you know, I was enjoying the swivel. Sometimes we swivel, swivel too quickly in life to slow down, and you got to slow down and enjoy it. Look at my camera was doing so well, and now here we go live, and here I am all slowing down again. Do yeah, I look blurry? Scott's in 1080p. You said it was 780. What happened? What's this 1080? I upgrade for the nightcap. I just did it a second ago. Ah, uh, we already got some people saying hello. Yosef, how yeah, are you? Because, Mike, this, is, this has got to be like our uh, – it's like our 11th or 12th episode, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, we were thinking Netflix, and then uh, YouTube Red has contacted us. After the Cobra Kai series, uh, it's something about the Atlantic guys coming next. Something like, you're going to play like Johnny, and I'm going to be like uh, Daniel. Yeah, the you're going to be Daniel totally, because he's like the bully. <laughs> Daniel used to be cool in the 80s. Now, <laughs> not so much. Oh, man, how you doing, Larry? Great to have you. Andy, great to have you. Alex Luna. Ah, nice. faithful listener. Yes. Andy, have you been to every episode? I think you might have missed once, but seriously, you, you are a faithful listener. I almost thought you were going to say you complete me, and I was like, wait a minute. That, that no, was no, me. that's you. That's you, Mike. You Alex. Mike, tell so, us, how's the land business this week? How's it going? It's great, great. Uh, you know, it's it's moving forward. I love the fact that uh, I'm proud to say I don't do much. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, I have a. You know what? Is it okay if I start with one of my own quotes? I mean, this is something you created, right? You're 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 the quote my own self master, right? Yeah. So my favorite one is land investing is a team sport. This is like something you know. It's all about building a solid team and. I have an incredible team. The people that work uh, with us are awesome, and I couldn't be happier. It's just, uh, it's, it's just awesome. So land investing, that's the quote, by the way. It's a team sport. Right, right. Get it? I, I get it. <laughs> I thought – How's the real estate going for you? What's that? What's, how's, the real, how's, the, how's the land investing going for you this week? Here we are on uh, Thursday. You're yeah. In 1080, whatever, P, whatever you say. How's it going? <laughs> Look how clear I am. Yes. Yeah, it's going well this week. Uh, haven't had a sale this week. I had I had one last week and one the week before, but, you know, it kind of goes in spurts, right? So we're looking uh, – I got I got a few lots uh, that have some strong leads, so we'll see if we can convert them over uh, in a day or two. Awesome, awesome. Joseph's talking about his first deal here. See that? We're starting to show off with a deal. Congratulations. Awesome. Can you see well, through? I, I missed it. What do you say? Oh, he said first deal. Oh, nice. That's really good, actually. So, oh, what, you, drinking what am I drinking tonight? I am drinking a blended uh, scotch whiskey called Monkey Shoulder. One of my favorites. That's awesome. Uh, I'm uh, drinking. Uh, oh. The other way around, the whistle pig from Vermont, New England guy. Nice, very good. I have my first sip right now with you. Cheers. Larry Overstreet, what are you drinking tonight? So, Mike, we have, we got a good show coming. I just spilled on my computer. Yeah, uh, now you're all blurry. That's perfect. Yeah, we have a great show. We have a special guest tonight, don't we? We do have a special guest. Yes, uh, it's going to be kind of an exciting int introduction uh, of 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 a new. Uh, I don't want to say new member. She's got a new role in the community, so it's a good way to be fun. It. Fun to introduce her, awesome. and then we have our our always exciting nightcap segments. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, uh, the nine viewers that are currently with us, we're going to need some help with this segment. It's about to triple. Yeah, we're going to need some help with this segment later. Uh, so we. There was little activity in the group this week uh, uh, regarding uh, negative letters. So if any of you have a shove it quote of the week, please, yes. please post that in the comments and we will use that for our third and final, well, fourth and final segment, whatever segment it is uh, later in the show. Shove it quote of the week. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. All right. Well, Scott. Um, we had a great show last week, right? We had uh, 
Tate Litchfield, big pupper on the show. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Some nice, we, you know, we reiterated all our special names for uh, deals on the buy side. And uh, that was pretty exciting. Um, I think it's, you know, I love all the different guests we have, right? We have such a variety of people that come on this show, right? Yeah, I think it's a great balance, you know, between uh, some of the leaders in the community, the coaches, uh, but then to hear the the stories of the people going through flight school or coaching and, and hear how they're uh, executing and and converting into success is, is pretty awesome. Motivate. I mean, it's motivating. Definitely motivating. Definitely. Well, on that note, let's talk about motivation. Let's bring our guest in. We made her wait too long. You want, go ahead, Scott. Introduce, and I'll and I'll cue it up. All cue right. It. So we would like to introduce uh, Mimi McLean Schmidt to the community. Mimi is our newest land geek coach. Everybody. Hi. Yeah. Hey, Mimi. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm great. Happy to be here. Yeah. Happy to have you. Do you have a drink in hand? I do. Cheers. Good evening. Cheers to you. Thank you. And you. This is almost the first. We, I mean, last week we had Tate, but he started the show because we were worried about our technical difficulties. This is probably the first time we brought somebody in, you know, from the lobby, and both Scott and I can hear you and see you, and I think you can hear us and see us. Yeah. This is quite yep. a we're, we're taking great strides in our technical uh uh, you know, abilities here. Doing a great job. We got Barbara Thibodeau saying, hi, Mimi. <laughs> hi, Congrats. how's it going, Barbara? <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, Mike, we got to get Barbara back on uh, some night when there's not a tornado going on in Texas. Oh, I know. Oh, my gosh. Mimi, we had such technical difficulties at times, and uh, I think she felt uh, uh, that. And that, that was uh, where we're fine. Yeah, I know my – it's a little sketchy. I know. It was, it was so clear, Barbara, before the show – and then Scott did something. He's always trying to outdo me and look better on the show. I don't know what he did. A little, little, little virus came my way and bang, all done. I upgraded mine and downgraded yours. It's just <laughs> all at the same time. Internet today. This should be better, but I don't know. But right, Mike, we'll get it at some point. I'm all about us. Let's talk maybe. Maybe. Can we go back now? So, so maybe, you, the heck? Tell, tell us, uh, give us a brief summary of your story in, in land investing, how you found the community and What's your experience been like today? Uh, well, I used to have a real well, I, I used to have a really long commute to work, and I got real. This was uh, 2015, I guess. I can't remember. Um, it was over an hour each way, and I got tired of listening to the radio, so I started listening to podcasts. I was trying a bunch of different things. I even ended up on uh, things to improve myself, right, that were productive. I ended up even listening one time to this podcast about, I didn't realize it when I started the podcast, but it was about how a guy gets a girl. And it wasn't like halfway through, I was like, what have I, what have I got myself into? <laughs> so I, I eventually found um, Mark and Duran Frazier's podcast. So that was early on, right? I think there were 89 of those. And like so many other land geeks, I listened to them over and over again. Um, and so I ended up buying the toolkit and getting into coaching June, almost two years ago. And um, I went to seven boot camps in a row. And it was really like, it just gave me so much hope that I could um, that I could make the business work. And I'm truly the, I was talking to Scott beforehand, I'm the lesson in slow and steady wins the race because I don't have any like get which rich quick stories. I just have slowly implemented the things that I'm learning. And um, I think this summer I'm going to quit my job. Wow. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, I just, um, I love the land geek community and uh, I love having my own independence. So I'm enjoying it. That's awesome. Maybe, maybe yeah. I would say, I would say that that is better than slow and steady, slow and steady. If you're able to, you know, quit your job two years in, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. So congratulations. Yeah. I won't be replacing my income, but I'll be okay. So. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, what would you say, um, were, were you maybe surprised that some of the things that you found most difficult and some that you found easier than maybe you thought? Any, any kind of 
you know, any thoughts on something you um, may have been more difficult, but you you took to it very easily, or maybe something that was difficult. Uh, just kind of some some of the uh, some of the struggles along the way. I think it's when you're working. I think it's pacing yourself. I mean, I love the business, and I wanted to do it. And I wanted uh, success so fast, and I thought Mark said you're going to have to give it two to three years, and I thought no way, I'm going to be there in a year, right? And um, they would say two hours a day, and I thought they were just throwing out that number. I wish I would have followed it. I ended up just getting at about the year, year and a half mark, getting really burnt out, just really burnt out, just tired. Um, and so I think pacing yourself when you work and not feeling bad if other people are moving faster than you. You just got to look at your progress and focus on improving where you are. And that's that. I think that's really important. It's like what smarts say: um, comparison is the thief of all happiness. It's, right. it's it's really true, right? So you just have to be happy with your own progress, right? We all have our different levels of busy, right? So my my busy's. I think my busy is busy. Between my husband and I, we have three full time jobs in my land business. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have, and I have a. He's out of this. He's he is uh, out of the country three to four days of the week, and I have a long commute still. I'm a down to 45 to 50 minutes instead of an hour and 20 each awesome. way. So busy, but I'm happy. I'm happy where I am. That's great. You know, I, I want to touch on that a little bit. You know, I think uh, comparison is the thief of happiness. But what you really want to measure your progress in this business. Uh, on your own terms, on your own progress, right? And yeah. uh, the community helps push you forward. The coaches help push you forward. But if you can confidently say, hey, I'm better now than I was a month ago, you're moving in the right direction. You know, I and you guys have heard me say, I tell patients that all the time, is your back pain better now than it was a month ago? Yes, it is. You may not feel like you're making a lot of progress, but yeah. really you are. Yeah. Yep. This will probably be a great point for your uh, quote, Scott. You know, when, yeah, you, when you made up. Oh, you want me to bring that up? Well, yeah, I brought up mine. If Scott has a wonderful quote, Mimi. Have you heard this one that he made up? It's, it's, uh, yeah, Mimi, I was. Yes, it was on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, yeah. It, Come on, hear it again. Let's hear it again. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know. I'm at work. I'm, I love little ladies. I love helping them. I, I, I really do. Uh, and sorry, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> helping old ladies. Let me get you back on track. Thank you. you I appreciate love that. older ladies. And <laughs> I love helping them. And there was this little lady, she was having a hard time walking and sometimes the simplest instructions to these, Little ladies right help immensely. So I just had to tell her, we'll just call her Doris. I'm not breaking any HIPAA laws here. Doris, uh, you just need to take really big steps for me, and you're going to walk better. Take take big steps. Hit your heels first when you walk. You're going to do great. And she's, keep in mind now, I'm 6'4", and she's about 4'10". Oh so we look pretty funny walking down the hall together. So right. I just all of a sudden said uh, out of nowhere, hey, Doris, you know, even people with short legs can take big steps. I love then, that. That applies to our business. Like it does. I have short legs in certain areas. Like, you know, when it comes to when I first started, I had no experience in marketing. I, I had no experience in sales. Right. Uh, but I took big strides in those areas to get better. And so it, it's kind of my metaphor for getting better. Wow. Yeah. I, like I think too that we have a lot of guys in the land investing business and couples. There aren't so many women. And I think that's because uh, women uh, security is like our number one need, right? And um, being an entrepreneur is the exact opposite. You get, you have to push yourself so far outside of your comfort zone, right? And so a lot of times I have a lot of anxiety just about being told no or oh what if I mess up and um, but so I think that uh, for a lot of, of the lady investors we have those feelings but uh, 
yeah, reading the books and having the community to continually say, it's okay, it's okay to be told no, keep pushing forward. That's been another tough spot for me, I guess I'd say. But And then um, since I am doing it myself, my husband and I have very different uh, financial goals, whereas I want financial freedom. He wants financial security, which is also <laughs> vastly different, right? And so it's been, I've, um, I've had to help him grow in confidence with what I'm doing too, right? Because right. he's afraid I'm going to get taken advantage of and things like that. So I've had to help him feel more comfortable with what I'm doing too. So it's a little more, you know, a little more complicated. That's awesome. You know, I like the fact you brought up like inspiration and books because we know that uh, Mark's book came out, right? As I've, I got it on. Yes. Uh, I'm reading it right now, Dirt Rich. Uh, we got to put a plug out there. The the uh, the book is phenomenal. Uh, it's already got rave reviews on Amazon. Dirt rich. You got to get it. You can buy it. Uh, I got it on the Kindle. Can we go put our feedback on on Amazon too? I guess we can, right? Uh, if you buy it off there, of course. Yeah. Buy it, you rate it. Huh? I said you buy it, you can rate it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've heard a lot of. Um, folks talking about it. I got my book today. You know, I'll get like instant messages on Facebook or whatever. I got my book. So yeah, there's a lot of folks talking about it. Comment coming in for you. Uh, maybe it's Andy. It's so helpful for us. We're working the business, consistently learning a heck of a lot, but not seemingly getting ahead. So, yeah. so it's inspiring. We have, where's our first segment at 10, 15, Scott? What is this? We missed it. What <laughs> you're three minutes late. <laughs> you, you're so regimented with your time frame in the segments. I don't know. Are you ready for this one? The first segment is, does anybody know in the community? It's the Facebook quote of the week. <laughs> or question or statement or whatever. All right. So I'm hoping you have it. I love last Oh, uh -oh what's happening? Was it Sarah Ants? Yes. I love yeah, Sarah Ants. Yeah. I think she so was a here's the thing. quote of the week. Here's the thing. I scoured the group. And uh, it was a little slim this week on quotes and questions. So I'm going to do this again. Again, she is now three for three. Sarah Ant. For quotes of the week. Sarah Ant, and she's watching tonight. Woo! She is watching. Here's her quote of the week. <laughs> She said, I was uh, I was mad at myself for not being more diligent about my late paying buyer. They owed me $450 before I sent out the default. Four months behind. Well, D-Day is today. I sent an email out to my buyer's list and my phone rang within five minutes with a sale. Scott Todd told us to love the default and he was right. I'm totally the winner in this even after four months of no payments. I love flipping dirt. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's that pretty awesome, Sarah. Congrats. Thanks. It's yeah, the beauty I, of the default. The beauty of the default. Yeah, I actually love the default. Look at this. Larry Orvey wrote the first review on uh, Amazon for Mox oh, Book. Right, really. I've heard a lot of people having success with their buyers list lately. It's a cornerstone, right? I mean, the buyers list, it's hard to underestimate. Um, maybe it's easy to underestimate, but until you build it, but uh, it's phenomenal, right? I mean, these are the people that warm up to us. This is how we pre-sell property. Uh, the buyers list is, is just uh, such an essential part of what we do. Okay. Oh, look at that. Uh, Jim Lala said, uh, Mike, throw, what, what, what's that? He said, Scott Todd, Scott Todd rang the flight school bell and let us out. He must have just yeah. let him out. <laughs> We had I was talking about this on the round table about how you know his students in flight school right around this time get all okay, uh we gotta go now, we gotta go now. It's time to get on to the uh, look our view is just went up by ten. Oh, oh my god. They really did. <laughs> I feel like Scott yeah. Todd's out there. Alex Trebek, as I call him, he's listening. I know he's there. I know he's there. And did, and Scott, if he's there, and Scott uh, Scott Todd, I, I would like you to do something for me. Uh, there's this very powerful search engine called Google. If you type in Nightcap, if you type in Nightcap, <laughs> over ninety percent, over ninety percent of the spellings for Nightcap are N-I-T-E. So, in fact, I'm if just you, telling you, uh, you spell correctly, 
yeah, look look at the uh, tonight's uh, broadcast uh, present. You know, the way what do we put it out there on Facebook? It says nightcap in parentheses spelled correctly. <laughs> with <a laughs> yeah, that, that was an issue with the spelling, but <laughs> it's supposed to be spelled right. N i g t g h t. No, no. It's N i t e. Well, one way, you know, but uh, you know. We, we have another way we like, N-I-T. That works. So is Scott saying he'll let everybody out early if they go watch Nightcap? Or they, no, they, uh, actually, uh, they uh, get distracted, he's saying, when it comes time for the Nightcap to start, and he loses their attention. So he was had a little rant on the round table the other day. But, you know, I said, Scott, but all we do is talk about how great you are. You should love the Nightcap. That's right. Look at Matt, look at Matt Forbes' uh, spelling of nightcap. I like that one. What you got? Uh, there. Oh, night. You know what? I like that nightcap. I might nightcap. just yeah. nightcap. You'd have to wear different hats and uh, capes. Mike, let's have a theme night. You should. <laughs> this is not for LinkedIn version, Baba. Listen, Scott. I want to talk about something tonight. I want to have a little topic here. We had Mimi on here, and then. Uh, I want to talk about scaling the business. All right, great. Because we always tell people, right? I always do anyway. Maybe we all do. I don't know. But I would imagine that there's two things great about our business. One is the fact that, uh, you know, that we make such great returns on our land. And number two is that in, in the end, we don't do it, right? It's something that we slowly scale out and build up over time, right? So that's the other side of the equation, right? The scaling, the scalability. And, and the reason I think our business is scalable, I always tell people, here's the good news and the bad news about land investing. It's boring, right? It's just repetitive, redundant process. It's Groundhog Day over and over and over again. But because it's repetitive and redundant and boring, you can put it into a system, you can automate it, you can delegate it. So it, that's like the good news too, right? Anybody agree? Oh, <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> exactly, and, and uh, with that, it takes you more and more out of the business, right? So you are you're the conductor of this machine. Uh, you're not you're not the you're, you're not working in the bowels of the ship, right? So uh, in the bowels of the ship. What do you think of that? Huh? I don't know. That was kind of an odd reference, but we'll just <laughs> why? Why is it an odd reference? Nobody wants to work in the bowels of the ship. That, that, that's what yeah, you want to work in the bowels of the ship. No. That's what you do when you first start in this business. That was a great that was a great analogy. I don't know. It I was. Just, that was a good analogy. It has a negative connotation with I'm it. I'm thinking Matt Forbes in the lobby is agreeing with me. It's like he's like blushing. I've never seen Matt blush until this moment. What did he say? I've just never seen him blush to the moment you said bowels of the ship, and then I see Matt Forbes blushing in the lobby. This is the oh, first. Dude. Come on, people. <laughs> well, All right. Let's, so, talk. let's talk about removing yourself from the bowels of the ship. How do you do it? Let's talk about one of the amazing tools that we have access to in this community. Can we? Well, and, that, and that is LG Pass. So I will firsthand tell you. Uh, Two years ago, two and a quarter years ago, when I was going through coaching, when we first started this venture, uh, LG Pass was barely in existence. It was getting there, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a tool that saved me so much time and energy uh, and made my business so much more efficient that it's just crazy to be. Th so, so, for those of you who don't know, LG Pass is our online proprietary software that we use to run all aspects of our business. Mailings, due diligence, marketing, buying and selling. And we are able to automate these things and use delegation also. We can, we can hire VAs uh, to work within our software to take us out of the business. Michael? Out of the bowels. Oh, come on. That was like a <laughs> good, good, good analogy. As, uh, as Sandy, Marin, Sandy said, the entrails? Oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's the way I put it, right? Is 
<laughs> Opera is amazing, right? What you have to also, in correspondence with that, it leverages your team, right? It leverages the, because I always say at the beginning, right? Land investing is a team sport. The software can leverage your team and make it, it helps scale everybody, right? You have an understanding of the process of the, um, of the way that we take this from point A to point B. And then you have the software. It leverages your team. It makes things totally scalable. So LG Pass is phenomenal for that matter alone. I haven't seen an easier product for mailing. You know, you just have your VA dump the records in and it it mails out. I don't have to touch it and all the data's in there. You know, when I start to get my accepted offers back, I go see the records in LG Pass and I haven't seen anything easier than that. It's just completely done for me. Yeah, it's great. It's like you like you said, you're mailing at a high level. Like which if you're gonna scale this business, you're gonna go to a high level uh, of mailing, right? And then people are going to correspond back to you, and your team's going to be like, "Well, how do they know who this person is? That person?" Well, you pull the record up, you have a a, a copy of in front of you of the offer, and you can have a very intelligent conversation with the person and know what you're talking about, rather than saying, "Oh, Mrs. Smith uh, in Arizona, yeah, what was that again? What did I send you?" You know, that can be a very often. Yeah, it's all there. Yeah. And, and look, we continue the bowels of the beast, Andy. <laughs> you started something. This is like. Uh -huh. Yes, Bob, and necessity is the mother of invention, you know, and uh, this is something that came out uh, that made our business just that much better and, and able to scale. So, and you know, uh, any thoughts on scaling the business, Mimi? Any uh, thoughts on, on yes. difficulties? Or in some Build the engine before you turn it on, you know. <laughs> Get that automation in there before you start mailing. When you up your mailing, right, you're going to have all this activity. Make sure you built the engine before you turn it on. All right. That's this is my like, what's it? What's it? Uh, if you built it, they will come from. Uh, there you go. The, 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 it's a base. Not from a sports guy. Oh, all right. Dreams. Dreams. That's a good one. Well, hey, I see. My cup is dry. It's 10.29. I'm calling the next segment early because I got the power to bring him up to the lobby. <laughs> you know what? We need to toast uh, Scott Todd and Mark Podolsky anyway for creating LG Pass because that's pretty phenomenal. Too. All right. Do you that's, have a little yeah, sign? Yeah, that's a good idea. Do you bring them up? you have some homemade uh, technically savvy sign or do I just bring them up? Yeah, you just bring him up. He's Matt Forbes. Everybody knows him. He is. Matt Forbes, fresh off the blushing from the entrails and bowels. <laughs> Look at him. He stopped. He These are great off analogy. Off. <laughs> yeah, you, guys are, you guys are killing me with this podcast. You guys are all on the ship, on the top of the deck. I'm just starting. <laughs> so, like, bowels. I'm in the bowels. I'm in the I'm surrounded by bowels. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, you guys are killing me with this. Entrails everywhere, as Sandy would say. You are. <laughs> We have to give a quick shout out on this particular thing to Dan Schwartz. So Dan Schwartz, somehow someone used me as a reference for all this. And I said, hey, Dan, w watch tonight. I don't think he's on, but uh, we'll give a toast to you and I'll talk to you tomorrow. So if you're right. out there, raise a drink, raise your glass, pour it in. It's not that hard. You've worked hard. You've mailed. You've marketed. Scott Todd hit me with a bat. Prost. Skull. Skull to los. Ah, Matt, love having you. Matt, that was awesome. Thank you. Hey, I spoke to Dan Schwartz this week. Great guy. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. He's a, he's a house flipper, and uh, he likes flipping homes, but he does not like the things that come with flipping homes. Yeah, wait till he starts yeah. flipping dirt, man. It's going to be way better. It's going to be way better. There are a lot less problems with land uh yeah <laughs> i was gonna say bowels but i decided not to yeah work it in <laughs> We're, let's get back to that work it in for the rest of the show weave it in come on big boy okay. all, right, all right all right matt thank, hopefully you stick around for the final toast at the end I i'll like be here know. put your hat on though i'd like to see your hat hopefully uh, no, oh good we, yeah. we got rid of the, uh, we got rid of the other hat that scared me the one the uh, lecture hat is the best the I mean. hat's gone. I'll, have, I'll have that back next week Zano. it's uh you'll just wake up one day i live near you you'll just wake up we'll be hovering over your bed it'll be good it'll not be good get excited <laughs> in the lobby with you <laughs> i love having that power what's this oh, oh that's a little late scott here i'm late so he's helping me out there you go all right <laughs> thank you scott <laughs>
So, Scott, where were we? We were talking about scaling the business, LG Pass. Um, well, you know, I, I don't know um, if I should bring out my other quote right now. It's pretty good. I mean, I just created it today. Do you think I should save really? it for the round table? Absolutely. Bring it out. Pull it out. Why not? Yeah, but you know why I want to bring it out right now? Because I don't have Scott Todd looking at me, making me blush, making me feel ashamed for all my quotes. I yeah. know he's out there listening. This might be my way of bringing him out, but I can just quote, 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 and there's no Scott Todd to give me these funny looks that make me get all shit. Bring it out. I'm feeling I'm feeling pressure to uh, create another quote. quote? Yeah, you're going to want it after this one because this one's pretty cool. So – um, what we always talk about, right, Mimi, at the boot camps, like especially in the VIP rooms, they talk about swim lanes, right? They talk about the fact that we're talking about scaling the business. And one way to scale the business is is to make sure you're not doing all the work. So if you were to go from point A to point B and you had to do all these things along the way, you're swimming, right? All the way over, all the way back. And you're going to get tired, right? I mean, you only swim so much. It's like swim to the left, swim to the right. So my quote, Mimi, you're going to appreciate this one. It's swim in the pool, not in your business. There you go. <laughs> That's a much better visual. I'll swim dig it. Swim in the pool, not in your business. The way to scale this business is to build a team, as we said, a team sport, and you have people that you hand the baton over to, and they can take care of these repetitive processes. And this is not a difficult process once you understand how the whole deal flow process works, right? You have to have that intimate understanding. Some things you'll farm out quicker, right, maybe, but other things will take time, and you just have to understand it. And swim in the pool, not in your business. What do you think? I'll let you guys take it. It's awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Talk about swim lanes, Scott. What do you think about it? What do you think about scaling the business, swim lanes? What, what's your thoughts? Uh, let's see. Well, here's something that was helpful for me that may be helpful for others. So, you know, I – Swim lanes, mind maps, kind of the same thing, right? So from from early on, I started drawing out my business uh, and started kind of uh, doing that maybe once a month, maybe a little bit more frequently, and adding and subtracting to all these different systems in my business. And you look at how those drawings – so to speak, have evolved over time. And it's, it's pretty amazing. So I, I would encourage anybody out there to kind of map things out on paper and do it on day one, do it on day 30, do it on day 60, do it on day 90. Every 30 days, draw it out. And you will gain insight uh, as to how you are progressing along. Uh, and you will be able to, as you're going along, you're going to notice that uh, – you are very present uh, in doing, you know, 100% of these duties that you're drawing out initially, but later on you're less and less, or you're more and more removed from the business that you're drawing out. And that's, that's, that's what I use uh, in my business is kind of a mind map per se. And that, that really helps me. That's awesome. And, uh, that, Barbara has a question. Yeah, I just say inspired a question to you, uh, Mimi. Uh, I'll read it and you can answer it. Mimi, how do you let go of the quality control of contacting your clients? Well, I, on the, I have an acquisitions manager, and uh, she has great people skills. And, and um, she's, re she's really good at talking with folks. And so I, haven't, I, uh, I actually have really enjoyed handing that part of the business over to her. Now, on the sales side, I haven't. I still do all of that. Honestly, I think I could probably find someone that could do it better than me, but I still do that part of the business until I feel like I really know it really well. Um, and I can bring someone on and maybe share it with me for a while. Uh, but I'll, I'll probably keep that sales aspect for, for the near, near term really. And then also on the back to the swim lanes conversation, once you do that a couple of times and you bring in more and more VAs, you start to think, oh, my gosh, I've got my whole business automated, right? I have six VAs. I've got an acquisitions manager. Yeah, it's all automated. But then when you go and you redraw those swim lanes and you start to attach everything, you'll notice, oh, and I still do this little piece, and I still do this little piece. I still, And you'll see 
how uh, little places that you still need to think about how you're going to get rid of. So it's it's interesting how the swim lanes uh, yeah, progress. It clearly identifies uh, what's going on. Uh, we love using scalpel. I think we do that a lot in the, the coaching clients. It's a great way to mind map everything, right? Um, it's a nice little software if you guys haven't used it. Scalpel, you can do that. Uh, one of the boot camps, Laura Zaino, she had suge suggested uh, Workflowy for me yeah, to uh, well for our, yeah uh, map out all the steps of the business for me to hand off to VAs. So I've used that to help me too. You should be happy to hear that. Shout out to Laura Zaino. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. Oh, she can hear me. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said thank you, Mimi. She all right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, um, it's it's just interesting, right? Because I like the question she said about let go of the quality control. I mean, because like we have this, a lot of people maybe have this fear, like who can do it better than I can, right? Who's going to have as much interest in the um, in, in doing it right? But there are some really good people out there, people that really can do better than we can. Uh, and it's just, you know, training them. And hiring a BA can be difficult. It could take you a few, I always say, you go through a few of them. But when you find the right one, you treat them right. And, and you just reap the benefits, right? I mean, they'll do a great job, and they can do it better than we can if you just give them the chance, right? Uh, just got to let it go. And we have a thank you. We need some questions from the, uh, yeah. from the eight viewers we have. What is my, what's Mike saying or Aaron saying? Maybe if you hide. Yeah, he's trying to – try, sometimes – We've managed to pull Scott Todd out. Like, he's secretly watching. We've made comments. It doesn't <laughs> pop out. So he's saying, if I hide my video. I do that on the round. What I do on the uh, round table is I'll, I'll blur Scott out or something. So I, I'm going to do my quote. I, if I look at him, he's going to be like, yeah, here we go, Mike. You're going to talk about breathing again. I'm like, no. Everyone <laughs> loves your quote. You're known for your quotes. I know. You'll be letting your fan base down. I try. <laughs> uh, excellent, excellent. Well, right. Do you so, have a Facebook shove it quote of the week? I know we had a little th something here from Aaron. You want me to pull it out? Yeah, I was just thinking that. I uh, I have it here as well. So, But you go ahead if you've got it. Uh, all right. Well, you you hold on. So first of all, Facebook community, Landy community, we need negative uh, <laughs> derogatory quotes from, from the people. The bowels of the business. Yes, we, we, we need quotes from the bowels of the ship for the shove it quote of the week. So make sure you're submitting those to Mike and myself so that you may be featured on Nightcap and IT. Yeah. This idea, and I'm not going to say it because it still sounds the same, but someone gave him a full letter word and didn't even spell it right. I go for it being polite when they told them to. Oh, my uh, goodness. So they even spelled it wrong. I can't leave it up too long. That's just, I, just, I can't leave that up. You can't. You can't. No, I did. But that, anyway, that guy was a polite person telling him to take a hike, right? Uh, it was kind of. Uh, <laughs> you know what we're going to encourage here is we want to make sure people. I want you guys to email Scott and I over the week questions and topics because we want to make sure we're talking about parts of the business, subject matter that really, you know, we really want to put content out here, right? That's going to help. So if it's anything that you think of during the week, um, just, uh, you know, email us, info at thelandgeekguys.com. Yeah, we have the same email. We're really geeky now. We share the same email. Larry Overstreet, I couldn't agree more. I love the Zen quotes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mike, I think I think we should uh, tell everyone that the next flight school module starts. In five days? Six days. Five. Well, five days. Five days. Sorry. Didn't plus mean five up. is 15, Scott. Didn't mean to blow up. <laughs> it's the 15th and today's the 10th. Who's right? Yeah. The wow. next flight school. The next <laughs> Land Geek flight school starts Tuesday, May 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern. Oh, my gosh. If any of you are interested in joining flight school, we do have spots left. So please email or Facebook message. Uh, Mike and myself, info at Land Geek. Oh, we're right on the screen because I have the power. Or they can schedule a call with us, uh, thelandgeek.com slash training. If I, if, am I, uh, 
putting you on the spot if I ask when the next boot camp is. Do you guys know when in August it's in it is? Arizona, in August. Um, it's just in Arizona. I'll tell you right here in a second. Yeah, it's going to be extremely cool. They're predicting that, and and for the uh, next boot camp. Oh, Arizona. you know, <laughs> it, what, what last year was beautiful. I it was. was not. We were, you know, they have those misters everywhere you go. It was glorious. And there were like hummingbirds flying all around the flowers. They were everywhere. The views were amazing. I loved that resort. Yes, it's a beautiful, that's a camelback, right? Yes, that was a beautiful resort. We had a great time. Yeah, we have our rooms reserved. We're ready to roll. That's that. We, we love it. It's going to be awesome. August 3rd through the 5th. 3rd through the 5th. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Because, you know, I went to seven in a row. I had quite the role going. And then I stopped my coach. I came out of coaching in January. And I haven't been to two. And, it's, man, it's 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 not fun when all your friends are out there learning new stuff. And they're messaging you on your phone. You know, I, I missed going. So. Are you going to be in August? Are you going to go? Yes, I'm going to be there in August. I got plans, yes. Well, somebody has a, something they want to say. Let's play it. Oh, I love how Mike says power. 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 Um, I can't. I try to say power. Matt, <laughs> Matt knows. Matt feels my pain. You're <laughs> yeah, Arizona in freaking August. How about January? I uh, hear yeah. <laughs> Well, Mimi, thank you so much for coming on our show. One time I made the mistake of inviting Scott on my show. It was a, it was a slip because I was a little nervous. Scott makes me nervous. He looks so good. He's got that you know, really crystal clear video, and I never heard the end of it. So for coming on our Scott and Mike's show, I just wanted to say. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. It was a lot of fun, and uh, congrats on on, uh, on being a new Land Geek coach. Uh, you're going to be a great coach, and uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. Thank you. I'm really excited about it. Yes, it's phenomenal. All right, well, we'll bring Matt up for our final toast of the night. Here okay. we go. We got, one more, we got one more segment. Is that what it is? Skipping a segment. You're skipping. Oh, the, I mean, we do. We're gonna, there's a segment. Mimi, do you know you the you complete me segment? Have you, you ever done this before? I mean, no. He doesn't know because the paper didn't come up yet. Oh, the paper didn't come up. Here, here it is, Mike. Oh, Barry so McGuire, a sporting yeah. movie guy. It's a love story, Mike. You complete me. It's, it's a, a love, love story, not as yeah, it's a love story. Not a sports <laughs> movie, Mike. All right, so this is what, right? what happens is we bring up some sort of a thought, some sort of a statement, and um, what we do from there is you you actually um, will complete it. But I think while we're thinking about that, Scott, you think about this uh, completely because you, I'll let you be the one. I'm going to answer Alex's question if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, great. <clears throat> Alex wants to know what's the difference between flight school and coaching. So. Flight school actually begins all coaching programs, right? Flight school now, I always call flight school the land geek standard of how we do what we do. Scott Todd takes you through all the fundamentals right from the beginning. There's five plates, as we, we know he's fond of talking about, the mailing, the due diligence, the closing, the marketing, the sales. He takes you through all of those functional aspects, but also allows you to uh, to, to pull them up into actual, you know, a, you take actual live action steps. You execute real time. Now, what happens is he has all the components in there for automation, for delegation. But as we know, that this is something that takes time to integrate. You go through the business over and over again, and some things you will automate and delegate very quickly, and some will take time, right? Um, so coaching, what it allows you to do is when flight school's over, some people opt to have the accountability, allowed to have the constant contact with the coach. They want to have the assistance to really bring themselves into uh, the, uh, working out of the business a lot quicker than they would on their own. And they're all year-long programs. We believe that a year-long program is what it takes to a, a macro goal, right? That's a year down the road. It takes that much time, but we're all big on the 12-week year, so it's a micro goals. We set you up throughout the year to hit that major target. So coaching is more comprehensive in scope that allows a lot of accountability, connection, content. It's just incredible. Um, so that's the difference. Flight school starts at all, though, right? Flight school provides a foundation the framework which makes coaching uh, all the better. So hopefully that explains, it, Alex. And if it if it doesn't, call me. Call Scott. Call me. We'll talk more about it. All right, and Laura. Good. Look at why so, Look at that's awesome. Look at Aaron. 
telling us to answer them. I love it. The, the wives are on here. Then Laura throwing up the next comment. Make sure you schedule a call with us. Scott, they're, they're right on top of it. They are right on top of it. I and love they compliment each other. This is great. <laughs> Supporting <laughs> each other. I dig it. All right. So I'm bringing Matt up. For, here we go. Coming up from the lobby. All Matt, right, Mike, yeah. you complete me. We're just going to leave it at that. You no, 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 no. No, that could be no, here. Really. It's fine. fine. No, 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 no. Mimi? Mimi. I'm going to ask you something, and you got to complete the statement. Oh, God. A little pressure, not too much. I know. That's a lot of pressure. What do you do with bowels and entrails, okay? Let's oh, God. <laughs> All right, Mimi, here we go. You, a few months ago, purchased the Investor Toolkit. You've been through that thing front and back two or three times. You've sent out mailers. You, you have even done a deal, right? You bought a property for $1,000. You sold it for $2,000. You know that this thing works, right? Yep. The only thing is you're, you're a little bit intimidated, a little bit nervous, a little bit sick of being alone in this whole thing, right? You're, you're working really hard. Mike's laughing at me. You're working really hard at keeping your machine going. There is a next step in this process to make your business, your life, everything better. And that process, that program is? Get coaching with <laughs> Coaching with me. Get coaching and I love the answer. <laughs> coaching with me. That is, that is the good answer. Get some coaching. That's awesome. Yep. Awesome. I, did, I did it. It's work. It Maybe. did work, right? It did I work. You're be phenomenal would, because you're a great communicator, and I think that is a huge part of this business: communication. And you know, teaching people how to communicate and and being a good communicator, they work hand in hand. So I know that you're going to knock it out of the park. It, it's really awesome. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for coaching. Coaching is just—it's really. Uh, I don't. None of us would. None of us would. Yeah. And as the technology changes so fast, I wouldn't have even realized it, right? And, it, and, they, and I hear about it through the community as it's happening. That's awesome. Mimi, thank All you right. for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, Matt, you ready for the final toast? Yeah, Matt, let's hear it. Let's, 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 what do you think, Scott? Do we let Matt actually say the toast? Because I, I don't have one ready. Do you? I have a toast oh. ready. You do? All right. Sorry, Matt. You're out. Bring it, Bosman. What do you got? It better be good. I know where you live. Uh, I know. All right. So uh, I'm going to dedicate this to my son, Ben. Here's to your health. Aww. May God bring you luck, and may your journey be smooth and happy. Cheers. Cheers. That was lovely. All right. Scott, thanks for being on our show together with me. I love our show. I, I love your show. Great you know, show. Mimi, thank you. Matt, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to de-swivel. Wait a minute. Don't I get to play the... You play the out music. Yeah, the out music, which was yeah. the music, but now it's the out music. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to make an outro. I'll do that. I promise. Oh, uh, yeah. You say this all the time. <laughs> I love that you guys are like an old married couple now. It's it's amazing, right? It's it's unbelievable. So you cute. have no idea. I know. It's so, dude, buddy, you guys, you guys are so cute. Really, it's nice. <laughs> All right, we're gonna bring this up. Hold on. Where is it? What? Well, come on. What? Anyway, keep talking, Scott. I'm getting ready. All right. Well, hey. <laughs> Why? What happened? <laughs> The uncomfortable ending to the show. Let us all drink more while Mike Dano figures out how to work a computer. Exactly. Matt, uh, you better go buy another 1.75 for next week, my friend. Exactly. He's going I know. To... It's, it, it, this is a great excuse to drink heavily on a Wednesday. Which so. one are you drinking, though? I, heard, I saw the monkey shoulder, and I saw the one that Mike has. Very interesting. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Okay. A little bit of Maker's. All right. Hey, uh. A little plug for Maker's Mark, Matt. Do you belong to the Maker's Mark uh, club? No. Is there a club? Oh, there's a club. I have my name on a barrel in the warehouse. You've got to check that out. 
Well, we'll have to talk about that at the next boot camp. That yes, sounds really good. <laughs> Mike, are you good to go? Yeah, uh, let's just forget that segment. <laughs> D-Live is driving me too crazy. I'm going to de-swivel now. De-swivel. All right. Everybody, okay. thank you for coming. Great show. Don't forget, we want questions and comments and topics for next week. Right, Scott? Shove it. We need a shove it quote of the week, and we need topics and comments for next week. All right. Mimi, thank you. Matt, thank you. This is a technically this is a technically a fail on the out on the outgo. How do you call it? An outgo? <laughs> Matt, my office, my new office is almost ready. And then we're gonna get you over. I that. have I have LED lights ready to go for you. We're gonna make Scott Todd embarrassed about his setup. It's gonna be great. Nice. I'm telling you. Nice. Looking have a great night, everybody. All right. Good night. <laughs> The show is still alive. It didn't end yet, so nobody, <laughs> nobody keep talking. I hit the end button. Wow, this is like a this is like a round table.